In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct a Games Howl multiple comparison procedure. And the example is based on the driving simulation excursions or errors that people make when they're driving across three different groups, texting, eating, and control. And the dependent variable is obviously measured on a continuous scale. And the problem here is that the data are not associated with homogeneity of variance. So if we actually check the assumption here and click on options, descriptives, homogeneity of variance, we find that the homogeneity of variance assumption has been violated. And the reason is that there's a much larger standard deviation associated with the texting group. Compounding the problem is that the sample sizes are unequal. So in such a case, which can happen perfectly in a real world study, which these, these data are based upon, you should consider seriously doing a Games How multiple comparison procedure. Now, we should also consider that these data are skewed. So let me split the file, compare groups ac across group, and let's look at the skew levels. Yeah, so here we go. We've got skew of 2.647 for the texting group. And that exceeds the arguably allowable level of absolute skew of 2.0, which I recommend throughout the textbook. And this is a very seriously messy set of data because we've got unequal sample sizes, unequal variances, and substantial amounts of skew. And not only that, the skew levels differ across groups. So what can we do? Well, we can do a Games How multiple comparison procedure. Let me just put all analyze all data uh, selection. Because the games how procedure does not assume homogeneity variance. It does not assume equal sample sizes, nor does it even assume skew of 2.0 so long as you do bootstrapping. And bootstrapping is a technique that does not assume any level of normality. So we've got the most robust, powerful approach, I think, of analyzing data, which is the games how estimated via bootstrapping. So I'm going to click Bias Corrected Accelerated. I've got 1,000 numbers of samples. So that's how many times it's going to redraw a sample, conduct the analysis, and create its own distribution from which it'll be able to calculate a standard error. So let's click on OK. This may take a few seconds because it's got to run the analysis a thousand times. In fact, it might take a minute or so. Let's just see how long it takes. All right, so that took about a minute to do. I am running the video capture program, which slowed things up a bit. But, you know, a minute's not very long to get a thousand resamples. And we can see here that we've got the descriptive statistics here, which made things take longer, I suspect. So I've actually got the mean and the 95% confidence intervals, and I've got them estimated with the 95% bias corrected confidence intervals in this descriptives box, which you can consider reporting in your report. But the main crux of the analysis is down here where we have the bootstrap multiple comparisons. And we can see that it's based on 1,000 bootstrap samples. And so the group texting versus eating has a mean difference of 1.394. And because the lower and upper bound confidence interval associated with this mean difference does not intersect with zero, they're both on the positive side we would reject the null hypothesis of equal means between texting and eating. And those means were texting was a mean of 3.49 excursion versus 2.1 excursion. So texting was associated with a greater number 
of driving errors in the driving simulator. Now we have the texting versus control group, which is also statistically significant. So the mean difference there was even larger. And looking at the bias corrected confidence intervals, it's also statistically significant. Now these results do not necessarily correspond with this table because this table does not take into account the fact that the data are very seriously skewed. So it's not bootstrapped here. The bootstrap depth estimation procedures in the last table. So that is how you can conduct a, a Games Howell multiple comparison procedure. Just look at each group, make sure that the bias corrected confidence intervals are on one side, either both negative. So I guess the other example is eating versus texting both on the negative side, just barely, negative 0.04, it almost intersected with zero, but it didn't. And because the lower bound is negative 2.99, we would reject the null hypothesis of equal means between eating and texting. And the games howl procedure, by the way, is a single step procedure, so I do not need a significant ANOVA. Do not need to look at that. The last thing I'm gonna mention is that in a textbook, I actually calculate bootstrapped based T values. And what you can do is you can calculate the mean difference for a particular comparison and divide that by the standard error and you'll get the equivalent of a t-value 1.39444 divided by 0.7299 and that would be the equivalent of the t-value and you could you know you could test that against the expectation of a value of 1.96 or greater to determine statistical significance and I mentioned in the textbook that you won't necessarily see correspondence between what the t-value is based on dividing the mean difference and the standard error and the bias corrected adjusted confidence intervals because they are slightly different algorithms to determine the estimates of confidence or standard error. So they're not exactly the same thing. This standard error is based on a slightly different bootstrap algorithm than the bias corrected adjusted confidence intervals. If I had to say which one you should go for, if they're not consistent with each other in terms of the T value being not greater than 1.96, I would probably endorse the bias corrected accelerated confidence intervals over the standard error estimated with the more regular bootstrap algorithm. So that is how you can do a Games Howell procedure. It doesn't assume equal variances. It doesn't assume equal sample size. And if you bootstrap it, it doesn't assume any level of normality either. It's really quite the whiz-bang analysis that you should have in your tool belt.